Daily Tech News Show is made possible by you, its listeners. Thanks to all of you, including AP Puppy, Dale McCahey, Matt Zaglin, and a libertarian. On this episode of DTNS, CES kicks off, and boy, howdy, have we got the news. Buckle in, partners. It's going to be fun. This is the Daily Tech News for Monday, January 8th, 2024. From Studio Animal House, I'm Sarah Lane. From Columbus, Ohio, I'm Rob Dunwood. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. So this show is going to be a little different than our regular shows just because we have so much CES news. We're going to try to pack that in uh, along with other news that you need to know about. So let's kick it off with the quick hits. Now, Apple is not at CES in any official capacity, yet we have four Apple-related stories. <laughs> First, the Apple Vision Pro mixed reality headset will go on sale in the U.S. on February 2nd, with pre-orders starting January 19th. Meanwhile, Jeffrey's analysts estimate that iPhone sales in China fell 30% in December compared to last year. Quite a drop. Apple will also pay people around $92 per claim to settle a 2020 class action lawsuit over how it managed aging batteries by slowing down the performance of older phones. Finally, Apple is appealing the EU decision regarding its App Store under the DMA, Digital Markets Act. Apple says the EU shouldn't treat watch, iPad, and iPhone stores as one entity. OpenAI published a letter on its official blog stating its rather unsurprising point of view in response to the New York Times lawsuit against it. OpenAI asserts that training on publicly available data is fair use of copyright works. It also noted that it believes models outputting exact copies of copyrighted works are not typical and suggests they may be cherry-picked or the result of carefully phrased prompts meant to get the model to output a copy. Waymo announced on Monday it will begin testing its driverless passenger vehicles using its autonomous Jaguar I-PACE SUVs in Phoenix, Arizona later this month. Waymo previously used the same roads with a human operator, so this would be the same thing but without a human. In December, the company started offering curbside drop-off and pickup at the Phoenix airport after it also made its autonomous vehicles available in the Uber app. EV sales rose 38% last year for Tesla and 93% for GM. That may sound odd considering the headlines about declining EV production, but while growth was positive, it was still short of expectations. On Monday morning, a ULA Vulcan rocket launched from Florida and deployed its primary payload, the Peregrine Lunar Lander, sending it on its way for an uncrewed mission to land on the moon. About six hours after liftoff, Astrobotic, which developed Peregrine, announced the lander entered safe mode and did not achieve its desired sun-pointing orientation. Later, Astro Astrobotic announced that a propulsion issue appeared to be the problem that could prevent the moon landing uh, 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 out, outright. Then in a later update, Astrobotic announced it had discovered a critical loss of propulsion entirely. It's trying to minimize the loss, but said it had begun working on alternate missions that it might achieve. So it sounds like it's not going to get to the moon after all, at least not in this, this trip. Sunday, Sean Bates found an iPhone in a bush that had been sucked out of the cabin of the Alaska Airlines Flight 1282 when part of its fuselage disappeared and has since been found. It's still working. Part of its charging cable is still attached and it showed an email receipt for a checked bag. All right, let's talk about some CES uh, news that's coming out. Uh, we call these the CES quick hits uh, this week anyway. The Wi-Fi Alliance announced it will now officially certify devices that support Wi-Fi 7. That promises better speed and efficiency over Wi-Fi 6E. That was the first to support the 6 gigahertz band. So Wi-Fi 7 routers already exist. You might even have one. But the certification adds another, another layer of this is going to work to your existing setup. Offering double the channel bandwidth from 160 megahertz to 320 compared to the fastest devices on the Wi-Fi 5, 6, or 6E standards and the potential for up to two gigabits per second speeds. Wi-Fi 7 also supports multi-link operation or MLO, which bonds connections across 2.4 gigahertz, five gigahertz, and six gigahertz bands. 
pet related technology is never hard to find at CES and this year Swiss startup Flappy is unveiling an AI powered cat door that automatically locks if a kitty tries to bring in prey that it caught from outside. Um, Rob, I don't know if you have cats who do that, but cats do do things like this. What are the reasons why I don't? <laughs> well, facial recognition is not a new thing. Uh, in fact, we're, we're all quite used to it. But video doorbells, electronic door locks, and fingerprint readers and keypads uh, been around for a while, but might get better with the Lockley Visage being marketed as the first electronic lock that can use facial recognition to unlock your door, making the whole process entirely hands-free. Maybe you have groceries in your hands. Maybe you have a varmint that your cat caught outside. I don't know. Keys, RFID fobs, fingerprints, and keypads also work in case you forgot your face at home, which sometimes also happens. Thread is the standard for how Matter-compliant smart home devices can talk to each other. Matter devices can talk other ways, but Thread has lots of features that make the devices more interoperable. For Thread to work, you need a border router like an Apple TV or Google Nest Hub. Up until now, each of these created its own Thread network, so if you had more than one, you had to choose one and remember it. The Thread group is fixing that with an update that will standardize how border routers share credentials so they all play together in one big Thread mesh network. There's also a few additions to help troubleshooting and bringing Wi-Fi and Ethernet connected devices into thread networks. Bosch is showing off eye tracking tech for cars that's more than just making sure that your eyes are on the road, even though that's very important. It can also know what points of interest you're looking at and offer suggestions like hours of operation, nearby restaurant options, some history about a castle you saw on a hillside, et cetera, et cetera. It can also tell if you're drowsy, which is a safety issue, of course, but Bosch also showed it knowing to ask you if you'd like a coffee. For the record, my 2019 Volvo XC60 also does this. Acer announced the Swift Go 14 and 16 laptops that can open 180 degrees, feature Intel's Meteor Lake Core Ultra CPUs, the new Copilot Key, and Wi-Fi 7 starting at $750 in North America in March. Then there's the Swift X14 that has the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4070 GPU, light sensing, and an enhanced 2.8K OLED display coming to North America in February starting at $1,400. The Vero 16 with pro-consumer, or should say pro-consumer recycled plastic and a touchpad made of ocean-bound glass is coming to North America in April, starting at $750, and $250 for the Acer Aspire Go 14 and 15S coming to North America in February. The Acer Aspire 3D 15 Spatial Labs Edition that uses machine models to make 2D graphics 3D, the 15, or excuse me, the 57-inch curved Predator Z57 monitor, and the 3D Predator Spatial Labs View 27 are all coming in q1 all right rob what would ces be without a big old tv announcement remember when 80 inches was a big television well tcl showed off a 115 inch mini led tv with quantum dot technology that it says is the largest mini led with quantum dot part of tcl's premium qm8 line as tcl tries to move away from just being a discount brand TLC also announced the NXTPA, the next paper, I think is how it's pronounced, 14 Probably. Pro. Probably, next paper. Yeah, yeah, the next paper, 14 Pro, which has a button to let you switch between black and white paper and full color tablet modes. It's an e-ink style, though not actually paper. No prices, but coming to the U.S. in early 2024. And Garmin announced the $150 HRM Fit that has a clip meant to snap on to the bottom of a sports bra so you don't have to use an uncomfortably tight chest strap. Not all of us wear sports bras, but for those who do, you know. It is compatible with Edge cycling computers and captures heart rate data as well. Garmin also announced the $250 Lily 2 hybrid analog smartwatch marketed to women. And Garmin also updated its Connect app to look more organized. All of these are available now. All right, Rob, let's talk about some chips. Well, HP claims to have the lightest 14-inch gaming laptop in the world. The HP Omen Transcend weighs 3.5 pounds while still packing in an NVIDIA RTX 4070 GPU. That's only 0.1 pounds heavier than the 14-inch MacBook Pro. It has three requisite ports, USB-C, A, and a full-size HDMI port, and it's 
2.8K OLED panel and runs on Intel's Meteor Lake processors. The HP Omen Transcend starts at $1,600 and is shipping in Q1. Yeah, and we have HB's Omen Transcend 32, which is not only a 4K 240 hertz monitor, but also has a KVM built in and gives you picture in picture of each computer that is plugged in. You can even drag files from one device to another. No price or release date on this, but uh, it sounds like HP is doing some cool stuff. Yeah, so I, I'm generally on the PC side and I'm more of a Dell person, but that's not a bad laptop. For sixteen hundred dollars, I mean that's that. There's a lot packed in that with a you know with a really really good graphics card. So you're going to be playing the best of the best games with this with with no issues whatsoever. I would imagine on this type of PC. I mean, I I um I don't really feel like hardcore gamers are interested in the lightest laptop in the world. But maybe I'm wrong. I mean, maybe that's just because that wasn't available until now. So I'm thinking maybe not your hardest core of hardcore gamers, but I look at this for like a college student that plays games on a, you know, on a gaming PC at the house, but just really can't take all that to college. This would actually work as a very good, you know, PC to carry around school because it's so light, but also you can game on it. You know, you can, you can, you know, whether you're going to play with it, you know, you put a keyboard, did you plug into it? So you actually have your gaming keyboard or you're right. playing with a, uh, you know, with a controller, this is going to hold up for that. So this is kind of where I see that playing for, you know, for that college student that didn't take their rig with them, but still wanted to play games in between study sessions. All right, let's talk about what Samsung announced, Rob. Samsung announced a feature called Light Warp for its Premiere 8K and Premiere 5 projectors that includes projection mapping. That means you can tap on the items in the projected image and interact with them. Samsung's examples were writing on a sticky note or playing a tabletop game. We didn't get any prior pricing or availability on these models. Yeah, that's coming. That's coming soon. Uh, Samsung also announced the Music Frame speaker, which, like its Frame TV, if you're familiar with that, is meant to be viewed as art. So you can customize the print on the front, hang it on the wall like a picture. But it also has surround sound speakers that uses Samsung Q uh, Symphony protocol to pair with 2024 Samsung TVs and soundbars. So this is all kind of rolling out this year. Also has two woofers, two tweeters, two mid-range drivers, plus wave guides. You can connect uh, by Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. You do have to plug it in, so this isn't wireless, but um, pretty cool. We don't have a price, but it is coming this spring. Transparent TVs are already a thing at CES. Samsung showed off what it calls the world's first transparent micro LED display next to its existing transparent OLED and LCD models. The micro LED display is brighter and doesn't need a frame. And Gadget said it was easier to see though the, through the glass as well. M micro LED has higher pixel density for sharper images. There is no word on when micro LED technology will come to a shipping display. Oh, Samsung, you thought you were the only one. No, LG also, uh, you know, has, has updated its wireless TV from last year with a transparent OLED panel to make what it calls the world's first wireless transparent OLED TV, the OLED T. Inputs go into the Zero Connects box that uh, was shown off at last year's CES. You can place away from the TV or near it. Uh, you have options. Um, you know, that's the whole wireless part, though. Uh, also added in a little rollable tech with a contrast screen that you can roll up or down if you don't want full transparency. Also has LG's new Alpha 11 AI processor uh, in the mix. LG says it will make standalone against the wall and wall mount versions of this TV. No price, but coming sometime this year. So I, I would say that Samsung and LG know what they're doing by telling you all these great things that are coming out, but not actually telling you the price because it makes you, oh, wow, I really want that frameless speaker, but I don't know what it costs. So I want to think about it for weeks and then they hit you with the price and you, you try to rationalize it as compared to if you get hit with the price right up front, you may immediately eliminate it from something that you might buy. Well, so th they're pretty good at that because they all, all this future stuff, they are not giving you the prices, which in my mind, you know, gives them the opportunity to change them um, depending on how the wind blows on what people are willing to spend. Yeah, I mean, on DTNS, uh, we try to pass along only stuff that we don't think is going to be vaporware. CES, 
sometimes, <laughs> oh. sometimes just the vaporware goes through the cracks. Not saying that anything that we talked about is going to be that, but when you don't have a price and you don't have a release date, you kind of go like, this sounds really cool. When and where? And um, how much? And how much, exactly. And sometimes uh, none of those things actually come to fruition. I don't know. I'm, I, you know, the, the whole sort of like TV when you're not using it being something else, you know, for example, uh, it, you know, a picture frame or, you know, something that you can use, you know, for work in some capacity. That has always been a promise. Well, not always. That has been a promise for, I don't know, the last few years. And I, I've never personally been able to make that work or figure out a use case for myself. Uh, even though I work from home and, you know, it, pretty much any monitor is, is always some sort of a, a work monitor in some capacity. But I don't know, Rob, what, what do you think about the idea of, like, having, like, a big old TV that's great for watching stuff, but is also something else? I am, I am interested by the idea of hanging a frame on the wall that looks like art, except for when I'm watching something on it. Yeah. So that that's that's to me where this would work because, you know, when if you're talking about nice art, the artwork can cost a lot more than what these 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 displays would. So 100%. that's where I see this being for something in my world to where okay, I'm not going to go buy that print, but I will buy this monitor that I can actually make it look like a print most of the time, and then I can also use it to watch the game if I need to. Yeah. So AMD announced three new 8000 G series processors with integrated graphics for the desktop. The $329 8 core Ryzen 7 8700G with a Radon 780M GPU, the 20 the $229 6 core Ryzen 5 8600G with a Radon 760M GPU, and the $179 6 core Ryzen 5 8500G with Radon 740M graphics. Both the 8700G and 8600G come with the Ryzen AI neural processor enabled. These processors release January 31st. AMD has also announced the Radon RX 7600 XT, which can do 1440p gaming for $329 coming January 24th and four new Ryzen 5000 processors based on older AM4 sockets for less than $280 coming in January, actually at the end of January on the 31st. Uh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Roger. I was about to say, it's very interesting that uh, AMD released these chips now. Um, they are essentially trying to fill out the rest of their uh, uh, not catalog, but they're uh, but their but their available uh, bottle sets uh, in their product category, so they have something for everyone at every price point. And what's interesting is that they released new chips, the 5000 processors, for the older AM, AM4 socket, which is an older uh, technology uh, that people still have, and it's pretty much of the mind of, hey, you we're not forcing you to upgrade to a new socket, new motherboard, all the new RAM, you can just buy a new chip and be happy. And so they're just trying to get the entire spectrum of customers from uh, from the high spenders uh, down to the people who just want to spend 300 bucks for an upgrade. Yeah, the, uh, the being able to upgrade your existing motherboard is, is smart on their part because that's why a lot of folks build these high-end PCs because they want to be able to modify and they want to be able to, oh, here's a new card I want to get, let me upgrade it. And it kind of defeats the purpose if every time something new comes out, you have to get a new motherboard. So I actually appreciate uh, you know them actually coming out with something that is going to allow you to use technology that's a little bit older, but still get that newness, that new hotness as far as the graphics cards are concerned. And I think this is a roundabout way of placating people who've been complaining that all their AM5 socket motherboards are a lot pricier than their Intel equivalent. So they're trying to like, well, let's let's see how we can spread spread uh, spread some of the 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 pain, not the pain, but some of the uh, generosity of the company around, and we'll give them some new chips. Well, one of the more popular demos at CES unveiled. That's uh, sort of the pre-CES Sunday night uh, event where a lot of uh, journalists, such as ourselves, Tom Merritt included, um, can go and, and see the new hotness. Uh, one, of, uh, one, of, one of the buzzier ones was the Belkin Stand Pro. It uses Apple's dock hit framework to connect to, uh, a device to an iPhone, 
but you don't need an app to do so. So you put an iPhone 12 or newer in the MagSafe mount, and the base can rotate 360 degrees, tilt up and down 90 degrees, pairs with NFC, at which point any app with a camera will work with it. Uh, the dock will track you and move the iPhone so you stay in the center of the camera frame. So you can turn the tracking aid off with a button if you want. If you don't want to be tracked, uh, just sort of depends on what you want to use it for. Offer uh, Also offers a 15-watt uh, fast charging while your phone is docked. The Stand Pro sells for $180 someday. <laughs> we don't exactly know when, uh, such as uh, CES not giving us release dates uh, for a lot of the stuff that we would uh, very much like to pay for. Belkin also showed off several other new products, including a three-in-one magnetic charging stand that supports uh, Qi 2 wireless charging for AirPods, Apple Watch, and a phone. That's $150. And a Qi 2 magnetic 5,000 milliamp power bank for $40. And because we know many of you love an efficient, compact gallium nitride charger, uh, you know who you are out there. There's also the Boost Charge Pro 4 port USB-C GAN charger, 200 watts for $130, launching in March. The 6-in-1 core GAN dock with HDMI, gigabit Ethernet, two USB-A and two USB-C ports ooh, for $230 are available for pre-order now. Sarah, I'm really liking that uh, that rotating uh, MagSafe mount. Um, are you? Yeah. I, I really do. I, I'm not an iPhone user, but if I were, this would be something that I would actually think about getting because you know, everybody's in the content creation these days. And this is one of those things to where you can just take it, you know, something out of your pocket, put it on this and you, it, it, the way it tracks you, I mean, you can, you can do some fairly adept videos or picture taking with this. So, uh, so that, that's what interested me most out of this, out of this read. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I was on a, um, a, uh, well, I, I, I was about to say a group Zoom call. It was FaceTime, but, you know, same idea. And, you know, somebody had a really nice, uh, you know, camera um, uh, shot. And I was like, what are you using for your camera? And she was like, my iPhone. <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, good idea. Um, you know, we can't all use our iPhones as, you know, our kind of rigs um, in in the way that I think that the Belkin Stand Pro is is supposed to be used. However, if you can part with it for the amount of time that you need uh, to use something like the Belkin um, and it not be like a standalone product, like, I don't know, the Echo Show, for example, um, or, you know, Meta had its own Facebook, I don't even remember the name of the product now, it didn't really go anywhere. Um, but, uh, you know, if, if you can use something that you already have um, to be able to be sort of a, a next gen version of a smart camera uh, that can that can yeah be used for fun but certainly for work sounds great to me absolutely Withing showed off the beam o which combines a thermometer stethoscope pulse oximeter and ekg into a device about the size of a thick tube of toothpaste it uses the same ppg sensors that you find in smart watches to measure your heart rate the ones with the green led it uses piezoelectric disc for the stethoscope and it has a headphone jack so you can listen to or let your doctor listen and perhaps a telehealth situation it could be used for something like that the beam o will set you back to 150 dollars it's actually $249.95. Once it gets FDA clearance for EKG and AFib detection, which it hopes uh, should come um, into sales by June of this year. Hey, man, uh, you know, the more we can figure out what's going on with our bodies and the stuff that we have uh, either strapped to us all the time or part of the time, I'm, I'm into it. Um, I, you know, it's funny, Rob, I am... Um, I wear an Apple Watch, even when I sleep, because I like to know you know, my sleep tracking, even though it doesn't really uh, make me do anything different. But I, I still like, you know, the data's good. But um, it has told me as of late that I have low, like, um, uh, cardio oxygen levels. Um, I mean, I'm pretty healthy otherwise. I run around a lot, you know, but, uh, you know, I'm sort of like, huh. Let's figure this out. You know, just, you know, it's a little metric of like, let's figure this out. Let's figure out if, if there's something I'm either doing wrong or something that um, the device is, is calculating, you know, in a way that uh, is throwing me off. So 
the more that, especially like, you know, when you get into the AFib situation, uh, you know, heart health, very, very important. Um, and the more people I think that, that have that kind of data that they can share with their medical professional, of course, um, the better. Yeah, being able to share with your medical professional is, professional is key because a lot of times, if you go to just a regular checkup and you feel okay, you don't really, you, you, there's no reason for you to say, oh, well, I need you to check this or I need you to check that. But these right. actually might cue you in and say, hey, doc, I got this weird reading on my, on my device. Can you tell me what this, what this means? So I, I am a fan of that. Yeah. Many of us are familiar with JBL when it comes to the headphones, earbuds, and speakers. But the company is getting into the microphone business and has released three new devices aimed at creators. The Quantum Stream Talk is a $50 condenser mic with a super cardio pickup pattern, which means it picks up only what is directly in front of it. The Quantum Stream Wireless is a wearable clip-on design that you can plug directly into your smartphone and will set you back $100. And then the flagship is a $150 professional-grade Quantum Stream Studio with a three-capsule condenser mic suited for voiceover work music and the like oh man i mean <laughs> our podcast studios i mean i know we all you know have sort of cobbled our own together um and i i actually just uh you know upgraded uh my mic situation a little bit but man to be able to make this as um not only sort of uh, I don't know, almost like put in your pocket and go, but like a portable thing um, is, is really key. I, I know a lot of folks, um, you know, a lot of folks skimp on the mic stuff. Um, and that is uh, any, any uh, podcaster who does this for a living will tell you, you can't skimp on audio. You, just you, you, you can't. absolutely cannot. You absolutely cannot. And even if you're doing video, half of video is audio. So you need to sound good. And what I like about these is they're all, you, the, well, two of the three are USB, one plugs into your phone. So you don't need mixers and interfaces and all that kind of stuff. You really can just buy it, plug it into your PC, and you're good to go or your Mac. Well, uh, I mentioned that Tom Merritt uh, has been let loose on the floors of CES. Uh, he's there right now. He is on the ground offering up his soul. We like to say to descend on Las Vegas this week. Um, it is CES is it, it's a lot. Um, it is a lot to take in. It's a lot to sort of wade through the FUD um, and figure out what is what is cool, what is actually going to change our lives uh, in the next year plus. Um, so uh, that's what Tom's doing. You can follow his antics on the DTNS TikTok and Instagram um, and on YouTube as well. On Sunday night, that would be last night as of this recording, he went to CES's opening press event, CES Unveiled, caught up with Nozilla cast Allison Sheridan. Let's see what they came up with. CES Unveiled is like a mini CES, right? It's, a, it's like where they take a bunch of the vendors from the big show floor that no one could possibly walk in a day, and they give us a chance to maybe possibly walk them. You've just been walking. How, how tired are you? Well, I'm tired already because I'm, I'm easily <laughs> tired. It's odd how many of the booths here have people with absolutely nothing explaining what they're standing there about to tell you about. Right, because they want to tell you. Well, but it's like they didn't even bring a sign with the name of the maybe the name. Of maybe maybe it got caught in the uh, Gulf. Yeah, that's probably it. There was the storms; they couldn't bring their stuff. Yeah, but yeah. I, I would say two thirds of the companies. I can't even figure out why I would walk up and talk to them. All right. I noticed a lot of haptic hand things, a lot of headsets, a lot of health tech. What did you notice? So I did notice a lot of people talking about things like uh, there was an Android Wear watch that was all about uh, mental health. Which was, that one was a little bit weird, but I, but I, I got kind of a smattering. I like okay. to, to go into the weird booths. Can I do a, 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 a snap yeah, decision yeah, on absolutely. each one? So there was a company called WISP, W-H-I-S-P-P. -P. It's for people who have uh, voice loss. So maybe they've got uh, throat cancer and they can whisper into this app and it comes out sounding like a real voice. And it can be your real voice if you have your real voice like already recorded. Right, right, right. So that was fun. Uh, let's see. There was uh, a company called Slim Design, which makes a body cam. They started, they make components for uh, like uh, uh, police departments for body cams, but they wanted to make their own inexpensive little wearable body cam. This thing's $69. It's a little tiny camera and, and it uses the power of your phone mostly. So it's just a, a as the, Bluetooth. That's the process. Right, yeah. right, right. So it can be really tiny and really cheap and has some proprietary way of talking to the phone. That was kind of interesting. Uh, Kahe was interesting, K-A-H-E. This was a uh, the first electric propeller 
end motor for a, a motorboat. So uh -huh. you could hook it up to a motorboat and it would go about an hour on like maybe a four or five person boat, but it can also be converted into a, a, a snorkeling device. So it's got handles on it and, and you can just go snorkeling. So you could like, ride the motor? You can ride the motor for like three hours. It was really cool. I told them to send me one and they, yeah. and they're like, uh, oh, we should talk. I think, okay. I was just messing with, with them, but they said yes. Um, how about an electric ski? These uh, people from, what's the company's name? Where is it? Squeal, S-K-W-H-E-E-L. They've got uh, skis, but it's actually like, uh, kind of like rollerblades. But it's got, so it's got two wheels, uh, wheels in front and back, and you're standing on the battery itself, and the battery packs just pop out, and then you've got a little hand control that you set the speed, and you can go 50 miles an hour. Now, this guy had a thick accent, a French accent, and I said, five zero miles per hour. He said, yes, and that's wrong. I should never be allowed to do that. But then you can go on sand with him. But, but he, he was talking about like being able to swish and, you know, go back and forth with your yeah. knees and really do the angles and everything, make it feel like skiing. Wow. So uh, that is like those old hoverboards, but on skis. I guess so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But your center of gravity is below the wheels, so it's not yeah, like yeah. being up on a rollerblade. How about why brush? This was fun. We spend too much time brushing our teeth already. We don't have the two minutes that it takes. This brushes your teeth in 20, uh, 20 seconds, 40 seconds. 20 seconds, 20 seconds, 10 seconds on uh, one side, 20, uh, 10 no, seconds on the other. It's a little Y thing. You stick in your mouth and you chew down on it and then you flip it upside down and it does the other, other side. That 30,000 little microfibers, something like that. You can buy this today on Amazon. That's why. So instead of moving around, it makes it efficient by right. just brushing. You, ju you just chew. You just go <laughs> <laughs> like that. Yeah, right, yeah. Right, right. I don't have that kind of time, Tom. I don't have, right. I don't have two minutes. I've got to speed that up. <laughs> Air, Air Eyewear, A-I-R-I-W-E-A-R. -E it is a personal um, uh, air purifier. Puts out seven liters per minute, I think it was, of purified air through um, uh, UV protected uh, air. Is it a mask though, or just it's, it's around a, your neck? Oh, okay. So it's two little things. It was not bad. It was not very heavy. I was I was pretty surprised. And uh, let's see, what was the last? One? Oh, the last one. Here we go to come in in the last twenty seconds. Exo Brew. Uh -huh. This is a home brewing kit. And it's, a, it's a, a pretty big unit. Think a Keurig that's way too big for your counter. And you order the supplies. You can do it uh, on specific things you want, or you can get kits. So they, they give you recipes, and you can mix and match. You can come up with your own recipes and order through them, or you can order yourself. For beer. For beer. Huh. Yeah, you're brewing beer. Yeah, but, but you're brewing it, not just putting it out. No, no, no. You're putting the hops in and the yeast and the whole thing. And I mean, real beer brewers are going to hate this, but I like it. Yeah, but no, about a home, I, I, people love home brewing, right? And he yeah. says it doesn't smell that bad and it doesn't make a big mess. In well, your then mess. how do you know you're brewing? <laughs> exactly, if it doesn't smell bad. But right. that's called Exo Brew. Okay, and, the guy, cool. and the guy gave me a, a, a peanut butter porter. I've got it in my backpack here, but I haven't tried it yet. I'll have to go buy it. <laughs> so that is my five-minute assessment of everything. At a, that is perfect. Allison, thank you so much. Now, you are going to have interviews with a lot of these people on your own show, right? Yes, that's right. We, we put them out pretty slowly. We put out like two or three a week. So it's going to be like October before this poor Exo Brew guy gets his interview up. But This is like a whole season of Nosilicast teases right here. Yes, this is it. This is it. And we're going to keep doing them at all the, at the different parts of the show. So it should be fun. Uh, thank you so much, Allison. Always good to be here. Podfeet. Everything good starts with podfeet.com, right, Tom? Exactly. Go to podfeet.com. You'll find Allison and uh, Steve Sheridan, who's operating the camera for me right now. Thank you to him as well. Join the conversation in our Discord, which there's a lot of conversation right now. So you can do that by joining up over at Patreon at patreon.com forward slash DTNS. Oh, man, I want that kombucha brewer big time. But let's get into some of the big press announcements from CES today. We're focusing on NVIDIA. All right, so NVIDIA announced its G-Sync technology is coming to the cloud with GeForce Now soon, no official date, but soon, which will offer variable refresh rate monitors to match the streaming rate of games from NVIDIA's GeForce Now cloud gaming service. The company first supported 120 frames per second output on its RTX 3080 tier of GeForce Now back in 2021, then offered uh, 240 frames per second on its RTX 4080 servers last year. NVIDIA's Reflex technology is behind this and has been expanded to work with 4K titles and 60 to 120 frames per second streaming modes as well. 
Nvidia also announced its supercars, the RTX 4080 Super, RTX 4070 uh, Ti Super, and RTX 4070 Super GPUs. Upgrades over its previous GPUs, RTX 4080 Super will sell for $999 and releases January 31st. The RTX 4070 Ti Super will go for $799, releasing January 24th, and the RTX 4070 Super will sell for $599, releasing January 17th. Getty Images and NVIDIA are partnering together to launch a generative AI by iStock. So if you ever wanted that image, that's what this is This is going for. iStock is Getty's stock photo service for individuals and small businesses versus Getty's enterprise service for larger users. So kind of prosumer, consumer type offerings. Just like AI by Getty Images, generative AI by iStock was trained on Getty's own l- library using NVIDIA's Picasso model. The service will cost $14.99 uh, for 100 prompts, and each prompt will generate four images. So we've done a lot of talking about CES, and we're going to continue to talk about CES. So patrons, stick around for the extended show, Good Day Internet, where we'll have more thoughts on all the things at CES. Oh, man. I mean, there are so many things. We're doing our best, everybody, but we're going to be here all week. Uh, Just a reminder, we do the show live, and you can catch it live Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 2100 UTC. Find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. We're always on demand, but love to have you live if you can join us. We'll be back tomorrow delivering more CES news with Mollywood joining us. Don't miss it. Talk to you soon. The DTNS family of podcasts. Helping each other understand. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>